So when we're talking about attitude control, we're not talking about uh, personalities. We're actually talking about how do we control our spacecraft. Yeah, like right now I'm facing you, and I'm going to stay facing you because that's where my feet are planted. Yep. I'm not going to spontaneously wander off and drift out of the way. But if we're both floating in space... <laughs> <laughs> that's not necessarily the case. We're not holding on to anything. Exactly. Um, and so even if we're pointing to one another to begin with, if a bit of gas leaks out of my space and over here it might turn me around, I might get a bit more solar radiation on my one part of me that might start spinning me. You don't think of solar radiation is pushing you, but in space it doesn't take much of a push right. to get you spinning. And so there's a lot of different sources that actually can affect your pointing and tracking and control of your object. Yes. So actually making sure your spacecraft points the right direction is a major part of yes. spacecraft engineering. Now a really small spacecraft you might not care which way it points. If you just cover it with solar cells all over the outside so it gets power no matter which way it tumbles yep. and you have antenna in all directions then maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. And that was one of the very early spacecraft they would just tumble happily around in space. Well I mean, yeah I think that's right Sputnik is famous for just like a little grapefruit with antennas coming out of it yes. right? Another way is to spin your spacecraft. This is a okay. Russian military communication satellite and it would spin. You see it's got solar panels all the way around the side okay. so no matter how it spins it's always going to get solar power and that helps keep it lined up. Okay, so spinning helps it rotate and essentially keeps it in a certain axis. Like a rifle bullet That's or anything right. else, it's, spinning stabilizes it. Yep. But for most spacecraft, it's a bit more complicated. Like a communication satellite, you've got your dishes, yep. and you want them to point at Earth, a very certain direction. And at a particular point on Earth. Exactly. And you also want your solar cells to point at the sun. And so now there's going to be an issue, right? Because those two objects are moving at different positions relative to your spacecraft. That's right, so you might need to be able to rotate your solar cells relative to everything else. Um, if you're a, a spy satellite of some description, you're going to want to know where you're pointing. Of course, you want to keep your solar cells pointing to the sun to keep your power. But also, if you want to look down there, you need to be able to point down there. Exactly. And then slew to point over here. You're flying over the world, you want to move backwards That's and right. forwards and point in different locations. Uh, not like this one where it's pointing forward, which is a particularly pointless place. To <laughs> That's point. the worst space, uh, spy satellite. And of yeah. course, we are very familiar with astronomy satellites. In that case, if you're trying to study a distant galaxy at the edge of the universe, you want to be able to point at that galaxy for as long as possible. So there's kind of two parts to this. One is we've got to know which way we're pointing so yep. we know if we start drifting off. Yep. And then we need to do something about it. Okay. Um, the International Space Station is a problem. I mean, if anything in low Earth orbit, you're getting a bit of atmospheric drag. Okay. And this atmospheric drag is going to push more on some parts than others. Yep. And then eventually that will mean the whole thing will spin so fast it'll break apart. Yes. Full of vomiting astronauts. So for the International Space Station or any human thing, again, you don't want it to be spinning. That's right. You want to keep it stable. Or maybe a very slow spin is acceptable. And again, you have to keep the solar panels pointing at the sun. So how do we do it? Well, you need some sort of sensor to tell you what it's doing. Okay. One of the simplest is just the sun sensor. Sun that way. Yeah. Um, an earth sensor is another thing. Actually, it's often a little infrared sensor that just says, picks up the infrared light coming from the sun. I guess, and I guess that the, the earth would be the largest infrared source nearby the spacecraft. But if you have the earth and the sun, the sun, yeah. the sun would be the biggest infrared source. Yeah. And then, you want to use infrared rather than optical because you want to be able to see the earth at night time. Yes. And so, so that's probably enough for some crude communications exactly. like just keep roughly an orientation. A sun sensor is probably enough to keep your solar panels pointing towards the sun. But if you want to point more precisely, yeah. then you're going to need something more accurate. They often use star trackers, little cameras that will say, oh, there's Canopus. It's often yep. quite, quite often using the Pioneer spacecraft use Canopus to yep. track itself. Um, and, oh, it's a bit too far to the left, therefore I need to adjust things. And, and so essentially we're orientating on a distant object to kind of control our frame of reference. And because that object, I guess, is so relatively small, it gives us a very precise location of where we're at. Yes, I mean, if it's trying to set to the sun, it's very easy because yeah. it's very bright. There. Um, but it's, it's also a big thing, so it's yeah. hard to know which part of it you're pointing exactly. to. Whereas a star, you get a very precise measurement. And then you can use gyroscopes. Gyroscopes can tell you relative motion. I wasn't spinning, now I am. Yep. But they tend to drift with time, so you need to cross-check them against the other things normally. So a lot of the more complicated instruments, we'll say, like, are space telescopes, use a combination of all of these. That's right. And then what do you do about it? Um, well, on the International Space Station and many other spacecraft, they use what are called control moment gyroscopes. What this is is a very big gyroscope spinning very fast. And if the space shuttle, a space station starts trying to spin one way, you'd move this to spin the other way yep. to cancel it out. And so what happens over time is you can adjust the 
the position of this to mop up the angular momentum. Exactly. Um, eventually that will be spinning as fast as it possibly can and then you'll need to actually fire some thrusters on the outside, probably some hydrazine thrusters, yep. to dump and then rotate it back to its and, and, that, and that's exactly what spacecraft do. They employ usually a combination of both to get that reset. Yeah. So on the short term they'll use this, so if the spacecraft's trying to turn this way, you might get the gyroscope spinning more the other way to cancel it out to keep it pointing. Yep. And then when the gyroscope's going as fast as it can, then you can dump some angular momentum using your thrusters. And, and obviously the limiting factor there is you only have a limited amount of fuel, so you can only do that so many times or for so much. That's right, but this is how the International Space yep. Station works. Um, Hubble Space Telescope yep. would be something that requires extremely accurate pointing. Yes. So they, what they do is they will um, get roughly in position using gyroscopes, yep. and then they will look at some stars near the target, yep. and they use a device called the Fine Guidance Sensors, yes. which will line out upon some stars nearby. We've both calculated this many times. <laughs> um, and then they've actually got reaction yeah. wheels. Yeah. These are like gyroscopes. They don't actually rotate, That's though. Right. They just spin faster or slower to keep itself in alignment. And this causes a lot of problem because these are moving parts. They're yes. spinning at thousands of times a second. So they go wrong a lot. Oh, yeah. And so the Hubble Space Telescope, they went wrong numerous times and had to be replaced. This is one of the service missions that replaced them. And you've worked a lot with the Kepler spacecraft. <laughs> which, which famously had two of the four break, which became a problem when you're trying to take out angular momentum in three dimensions, at least. That's right. So these are, you need them, yeah. but they're finicky. They're often the thing that goes wrong on spacecraft. I mean, you just have to think about an engine, right? A car engine is spinning at thousands of RPMs. How often does a belt or something else break mm -hmm. this, that same amount in the space environment?